So as we mentioned, the mass is being done either by other practitioner or by the patient itself. It's their choice. But us, as a clinical practitioner, have to deal with the complication, deal with the osteoporosis, deal with the diabetes complication, we have to deal with the recurrent infection, recurrent hospital admission, no bed for admission. So we must educate our public. The mortality in Cushing syndrome, either it is hydrogenic or it is an endogenous Cushing, was reported to be twice of the patient without the disease. So the risk is double. So the mortality usually is associated with Cushing syndrome, which related to the excess glucocorticoid. So as you see in other endogenous pushing as well. So these can cause you have hypertension. It is a secondary hypertension. It can dissolve once you remove the offending cause. You can have a cardiovascular disease. You can increase the atherosclerosis. You can have congestive cardiac failure, obesity, osteoporosis. You can have a young man with fracture. You can have a patient who is uh, 38 years old, presented with recurrent uh, non-traumatic fracture, you have an impact immune function. If you see an uh, old lady, obese, admitted for recurrent infection, please look hard for any evidence of Cushing syndrome because they can sometimes present with uh, recurrent UTI as well. And also the patient sometimes there is case report where patient presented with acute psychosis. So clinical history is important and justification when you do a thorough physical examination to exclude any cause of Cushing. So how we diagnose Cushing? So this is the pathophysiology. Don't worry, it's just a simple one. You will see the diagram A. This is the normal HPA axis. So this is the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary gland and adrenal gland. In a normal circumstances, normal individual, you have a hormone from the pituitary, anterior pituitary, which secrete ACTH. This ACTH will enhance the adrenal glands to secrete cortisol. So cortisol, if they are enough or high, they will give a negative feedback to hypothalamus and to the anterior pituitary gland, so that will reduce the the effect of uh, ACTH production. However, in the case with exogenous glucocorticoid treatment, whether it is from herbal or from our medication, it will suppress the anterior pituitary gland. Sorry, I can't. Okay. So you can suppress the anterior pituitary gland here. So it will reduce the ACTH production in your pituitary gland. Hence, the adrenal gland did not produce enough cortisol. So you must know that in terms of um, exogenous pushing, they will suppress the endogenous push cortisol production. Hence, this is the tricky part when we have a biochemical evaluation of the patient with pushing. So as mentioned, exogenous glucocorticoid inhibit CRH as well as ACTH secretion. So these will cause bilateral adrenal cortical atrophy. So the biochemical evaluation, the plasma ACTH will be low. The serum or salivary cortisol concentration will be low. Usually we'll do a prep ACTH and cortisol, so it's easier to interpret, so that we know this both is low, meaning that the endogenous cortisol is low, but it is from the source of exogenous the presence of clinical syndromes of pushing. However, in some cases, we can measure the corticosteroid. Certain uh, compound of corticosteroid can be measured by our cortisol assay, such as cortisol. It can be measurable. So sometimes it can be low, sometimes it can be high. However, the idea is that the plasma ACTH will always be low because of the negative feedback of the high cortisol hormone. Name it whether it's endogenous or exogenous. So what are the treatment for hydrogenic pushing? It's quite easy actually. You find what is the offending cause. 
you have to be a detective, most of the patients will not be, uh, uh, will not voluntarily give this uh, history. You have to uh, really prompt them to ask about uh, what are other the medication. Not only what they ingested, sometimes it's what they put on their skin, sometimes it is what they put on their scalp. Uh, it's also a, a, a most cases for pathogenic is come from the topical scalp uh, preparation that can, can can induce the growth of your hair. It usually contain uh, steroid preparation. So the aim is that we have to gradually withdraw the cognitive drug. As mentioned, we aim to discontinue it very gradually. Why? Because your endogenous cortisol production is suppressed. So you have to slowly take out and in the patient who has HPA at this, you can off the offending drug if you have and cover with physiolog more physiological dose of corticosteroid such as hydrocortisone or you can use a low dose of fatosolone if a patient cannot use a full BD and you also must remember, in a patient with exogenous pushing, if they admitted to hospital in terms of stress, or even they have an acute stress condition, they should receive a stress dose of steroid. So many will ask why we give steroid to the patient already pushing. So in terms of when you withdraw the uh, offending drug, they are absolutely uh, adrenal insufficient, they don't have adequate cortisol hormone. So if they admitted for recurrent infection, of course you have to give uh, exogenous steroid because they have stopped their offending drug. So this is very important because in terms of uh, this will cause mortality if you don't cover with stress dose of steroids. So the stress dose of steroid is about 200 uh, milligram of hydrocortisone in a day not more than that because more than that also can impact your um, uh, uh, function of the steroid as well as can cause a high risk of infection. <coughs> so uh, as I mentioned, it's just a quick one. I'll come to the last few slides. Hydrogenic pushing, what can we do? So it is important for us to remember what is Cushing is all about no matter where the patient was admitted because sometimes it's not really presented to us as a uh, physician or endocrinologist it may present to you in your work so you need to get a good history to the patient with a good uh, clinical examination to exclude the Cushing syndrome you should refer appropriately when there is a high degree of suspicion. They can present to you with various reasons. They can have a recurrent infection. They can have a recurrent cellulitis. They can also present them, as mentioned earlier, with osteoporotic fracture. So it is important for us when a patient comes to you and asks whether the supplement can be used or not can be consumed, so ask your patient to get to know what are the ingredients of the supplement advertised. All of the patients usually get influenced by overly promising advertisement, guaranteed, miracle, can cure all. Of course, there's no medication to cure all. If not, we will not standing here in a busy hospital to treat patients. So you need to educate the, educate the public, you need to tell them what a danger of using this alternative supplement that we don't know what are the chemical components and what are the complications to us. So this will give us a mess if we don't educate your partner. They can come with a lot of complications. So with that, I thank you for your kind attention.